G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we are taking part in another tier maker, just because every now and then I like to do a video that makes half of you hate me. And today the topic of the tier maker is ranking AFL midfields. So not individual midfielders, we're actually ranking teams and their midfield strength. A little bit of a, a tricky task because there's so many different ways you can segment midfields. Like, is it top end quality? Is it the depth of that midfield? Is it that quality on paper? Or is it their statistical output? It's very nuanced, but I'm going to have a crack anyway. As you can see here, we're going with the five tiers. Again, I'm not going to label them. That always shoots me in the foot. And I'm going to break the teams up into different segments. And usually how I start these videos is to take one team for each segment. So we set up our framework and then we sort of rank accordingly from there. So to start off, who's S tier midfield. The first one that comes to mind is the Melbourne Football Club. When you've got to, uh, guys like Max Gorn, we, we should include Ruckman in this. Max Gorn is the best ruck in the game, in my opinion. Oliver is probably the third best player in the competition. I did my rankings a few months back. Clayton Oliver, you know, assuming he's in the side. Jack Viney, yeah, Brayshaw, Langdon, like the depth is there. The top end is there. And I think Melbourne absolutely qualifies as possibly the best midfield in the game. So who is the weakest midfield team in the competition. I think that's clearly West Coast. Obviously the weakest team in the competition last year. Seen a retirement in Luke Shuey and Nick Nat Nui, not that they played much last year. And on paper, it doesn't look great. So obviously, hopefully that will improve, but it is the weakness of the weakest team. So I think that's fair to suggest that they are going to be D tier. Now, a team that I think will go in the A tier is probably GWS. I do quite like their midfield, but it's probably not S tier. And that will become more clear as we progress. But Kieran Briggs, I think, is a good ruckman to start. And we know Tom Green is probably on the verge of becoming a truly A grade midfielder. I think he's kind of on the verge of it now, but they've also got... Stephen Canelio, Josh Kelly, Callan Ward, uh, these types as well. It's a pretty deep midfield and Finn Callahan as well adding to that. So if we're assessing on how good they are right now, I think probably the second tier makes sense. So a team that's probably middle ground. Who can we say is probably middle ground? I'll probably put the Adelaide Crows here. I don't think this is a relative strength for them. It's not a weakness. Jordan Dawson, in my opinion, is far and away their best midfielder. Rory Laird is quite dependable, but also a little bit one-dimensional, but still a good player. Not trying to take too much away from him there. Then there's Matt, Matt Crouch, but I think what will eventually see this Adelaide Crows midfield evolve is guys like Luke Pedler potentially running through there, Saligo taking his game to the next step, Chase Jones, Charlie Edwards they've just drafted. I, I like their young batch of midfielders, but in terms of assessing the quality of it right now, I still think it's a little bit top-heavy, so I, I think mid-tier is about right. Now, in C, I'm going to put a team that I'm actually quite big on this year, and my latter prediction should have come out by now. So I have these guys making finals, but I'm going to put St. Kilda in C tier. So they've got a good Ruckman in Rowan Marshall, and Jack Steele is probably their best midfielder on paper, but probably hasn't recaptured his best form. And Brad Crouch has been decent. Uh, Seb Ross, they've recruited for this. You know, Liam Henry's joined the mix, and they've drafted well as well, but a lot of those kids are too young to really make a dent just yet. Machito Owens could be a wild card in here, but at the moment, on output as well, I think they were one of only two teams to get less clearances than West Coast last year, uh, along with Essendon, who is another team I'll put in the C tier as well. Again, Draper is the number one ruck. It's not the strongest, you know, ruck combo, even Draper and Goldstein. Zach Merritt is an absolute jet. Darcy Parrish is pretty damn good, although probably had his best season in 2021. Then there's, you know, uncertainty around Dylan Shield. Nick Martin is a great wingman and up and coming, but maybe he moves back this year. Sam Durham, an underrated player, but nonetheless, I think, again, one of the only two teams that had less clearances than West Coast. So statistically, they're not quite there. And while there's upside, like some of the young guys like Sardis, uh, Caldwell, Perkins could rotate through their setter field as well, seems to be looking good. On current form, at the moment, they're probably C tier along there with St. Kilda. So who's another D tier one? I'm going to put North Melbourne in here again. Now, I think their midfield is pretty good, but it's very young. Okay, so LDU has the potential to be one of the best midfielders in the game. George Wardlaw looks outstanding. Jai Simkin has had pretty good years without necessarily being outstanding, but it is still quite a young team. And Tristan Cherry is probably their number one ruck. And decent. So I think it's up and coming, but it's it's very young. And it's not really a surprise that the bottom two teams last year probably have the worst two midfields in the comp. Now the reigning premiers, I will probably put in S tier as well. Uh, their midfield is very, very good. Now Darcy Cameron by himself is not the best ruck by any stretch, but you write down the Dacos brothers. I wrote down a few names in preparation for this. Uh, Jordan Dugowie as well when he rotates through there. 
Pendlebury side bottom. Yes, they're at the end of their career, but they're still pretty damn good players, in particular Pendlebury. So even with the loss of Adams, I don't think it's as strong as Melbourne, but I think it's probably I think it's probably top tier. I'm also going to put Sydney in A tier. So there was a lot of talk about their midfield depth, in particular when they lost Callum Mills. But again, when I write down the strength of their team, it does help that they've got Brody Grundy now as a number one ruck, which I know he's not an elite player anymore, but he's still a pretty good ruck, I reckon, if you give him the number one role. But you also consider Errol Golden announced himself as an elite player in 2023. Taylor Adams joined this side. Chad Warner has been good in the past. I don't think he had the same year this year, but was you know still on an upward trajectory. James Rowbottom, a bit of an understated gun. Luke Parker, Callum Mills to come back into the side. They've recruited James Jordan. I think, I think it's pretty damn good without necessarily being top tier. If Chad Warner and Errol Golden elevates, or Errol Golden's already there, if Chad Warner meets him or gets close, then I think that's probably where they're S tier. I'm going to put the Gold Coast Suns in B tier as well. I think this is actually a pretty nice little midfield. Jared Witt's underrated Ruckman. Noah Anderson, All-Australian quality. I don't think he actually won All-Australian, did he? But he got close. And Paul Well in the brown low and 22 years of age. Uh, Matthew Rao behind him. So Miller, Anderson, Rao, Flanders, supported by Wits in the Ruck. I think uh, I think it's on the way up. So part of this as well is kind of forecasting how it's going to be in 2024. Not so much three years in the future, but I think in 2024, it could at least be a middle-of-the-road uh, midfield, which I realize at the end of the day is not that much of a bold call. I'm going to put the Cats in D tier. I, uh, I must say, I've been talking about their midfield um, you know, a lot this offseason, I do think it's a massive Achilles heel. So if we factor in the ruck situation, Reese Stanley slash Toby Conway, uh, not great. You know, Toby Conway could be a good player long term, but we're, we're talking about 2024 here. Cam Guthrie is probably their best midfielder. Tom Atkins has been very good on his day. But after that, I think it falls away to Tanner Braun, who I, I will back in to have a good year. But it's still speculative. And if he's in their number three mid, let alone their first mid, yeah, it's a little bit weak. Max Holmes could take the next step. Dangerfield at 34 could roll through there. But I do think, you know, it's probably still better than West Coast, but it's it's probably bottom tier on this analysis. I'm going to put the Hawks in B tier. It's pretty damn good midfield for the age and experience it's got. So, you know, Will Day, John Newcomb, James Warple, these guys are all pretty young. Ned Reeves in the ruck, um, Josh Ward, these guys are on the come up. So I do think it will be a good midfield in time. You throw in a few lesser known names outside of Hawthorne, your Josh Weddles, your Henry Husswaites, and this, this does have a lot of upside and it performs well for what it has. But if I'm honest, I don't think it does quite have the same quality as S and A. I'll put the Brisbane Lions in S tier as well. Um, a lot of depth. McInerney is a pretty decent ruck. Gets a lot of hit outs. And then Lockie Neal is probably the best extractor, purely extractor type midfielder of his type in the competition. Josh Dunkley is also in this team. Hugh McCluggage. Uh, Will Ashcroft on the come up as well. I, I think this team is, that's probably a top grade midfield. A tier. Maybe this is a bit harsh, but I'm going to put the power in uh, whoops, in A tier. And the reason being, they've got two of the best young midfielders in the comp. Two of the best outright midfielders in the comp. Butters and Rosie. And they've got Soldo, who could be a pretty decent number one. Ruck, Jason Horn francis on the come up. Willem Drew is a good underrated player. Ollie Wines won a Brownlow a few years ago. But I do think it's still a little bit top heavy. And that's probably what sets it apart from Melbourne, Collingwood, and Brisbane. I think those two teams, or three teams, have the depth that Port Adelaide don't quite. And I think we saw that a little bit in the final series when, you know, Butters and Rosie didn't quite fire. The next layer of mids didn't really step up. So ask me again in a few years when Horn Francis is thriving and Butters and Rosie are still in their prime, it probably will be the best midfield. But at the moment, for the depth, I, I think I just have it slightly behind. Richmond's a tricky one here as well. I'm thinking C tier, and I'll explain why. So I think Nankervis is a pretty good ruck. Um, and Taranto had a pretty good year, but none of their midfielders are all Australian quality for a start. Taranto, you could say, got pretty close. Um, Dustin Martin could roll through the midfield and, and boost it, but he played primarily as a forward last year. Uh, so who, who knows? I think Presti is good. I think Hopper and Taranto are good. But if those are their best players, then I don't think it stacks up against you know any of the midfields ahead of it. Um, Liam Baker, we might see more of there. I think Shea Bolton's going to play more forward this year. Jack Graham, there's a few bit part players in there, but I don't think it stacks up. It's not bottom tier, but it's not amazing either. Bulldogs is a tough one for me. I, I, do we do we factor in Bailey Smith's ACL? Because I think that probably would be more helpful if we f forecast the season where Bailey Smith's not going to be playing, in which case they'd probably be A tier. Whereas I, I think Bontempelli's the best midfielder in the game. And Tim English is... I don't think he's the best Ruckman in the game, but he he's one of the best, right? Absolutely no doubt. He is a gun. 
and Tom Liberatore is still a really good extractor. Then there's McRae, who's kind of fallen off a little bit. Trelaw has been pushed aside. You know, I think he played a little bit half back last year. And Riley Sanders, I do think, will have a good first year. So you could have him in S tier, but I think if you if you put Bailey Smith in, it goes to S tier. If we exclude him, it goes to A tier. Fremantle is another tricky one. I don't I don't think it's quite as good as GWS Sydney, the Power, or the Bulldog. So it's not A tier. And I do think it's comfortably better than the C tier. So I, I put them in the middle tier here. So we're talking about Sean Darcy, a good young ruckman. Um, relatively young anyway. Was he like 25? I think he is. Um, Caleb Sarong won an All-Australian this year. Brayshaw's won an MVP, but probably didn't have the same year last year. Hayden Young could sort of rotate through this midfield. Or definitely will, actually. And obviously, he's not an established gun midfielder yet. But you could see him being a very good one. And if he hits his potential, then in 12 months' time, we might see Fremantle higher up the rankings. O'Meara is decent. Nat Fife might come in and support this midfielder. And after that, there's probably a little bit of a lack of depth. So I'm, I'm happy with saying Fremantle's beats here. It's a pretty good midfield. And Carlton, I've um denied about this. Their two rucks are Pitney and De Koning. And their first choice midfielders are pretty damn good. Sam Walsh, Patrick Cripps, Chera, and Blake Akers, supported by guys like Hewitt and Kennedy. I'm, I'm sort of thinking between S and A. You know, I've been harsh. And I, I think if I put the power in A, then... Do Carlton justify being above that? Maybe. It's probably a deeper midfield. They were the number one team for scores from stoppage last year. Maybe I probably will put them in S tier. So I think Melbourne, Collingwood, Brisbane, and Carlton, four teams that either made the top four or... Well, all four made the semi and two of them made the grand final. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. GWS Sydney, the Power and the Bulldogs, the next batch of midfields there. Adelaide, Gold Coast, Hawthorne, and Fremantle in the middle. I think teams that genuinely starting to have a weak midfield, relatively speaking, are the Saints, Essendon, and Richmond. And then the bottom tier, West Coast and North, West Coast and North rebuilding. And I think Geelong's midfield is just a little bit, well, their team's a little bit lopsided, so they need to address address that going forward. Perhaps Bailey Smith enters the fray in 12 months' time. But anyway, guys, that is my take on all the best midfields in the competition. So let me know in the comments how much you hated it, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.